you know this, this conference, you know, Memphis, Houston, everybody going to give y'all their mm. best shot every time. But that your team that went out there on Sunday, I mean, last week, did not look like a normal Memphis team. Mm -hmm. What can be done to make sure they don't do that going forward? Yeah, we, we watch film. We can understand that, you know, during the game, that there was a lot going on on the bench and during the game, uh, last game, and it kind of got us distracted of what the mission was, and that was to beat Tulane. We kind of had some self-inflicting wounds with foul trouble, uh, with attention to detail and things like that. And, you know, anytime you give up 96 points on this level, I mean, this isn't the NBA. It means you're giving up a ton of layups, you're fouling too much, and you're not following the game plan. So we've uh, come back to the, the drawing board and kind of got back to what we were doing before we got the masses back. And I keep talking about that because at, at, at a couple times throughout this season, uh, the numbers have been strictly about the guys that have been here. And then we kind of sprinkle guys in. Now we're starting to play the newer guys more and we're kind of getting some communication problems. So not blaming them, but it's like the chemistry is off a little bit. So we got back to where we were uh, this week. We needed that week off after that loss. What do you mean by some stuff going on on the bench? What is that? No, I'm just saying like guys just aren't locked in, coming out of the game, maybe upset, guys coming out of the game, uh, not following the game plan. So it's when that starts to happen, you can't lock in on what, what the ultimate goal is, and that's to win the game. You said Monday on your radio show that you might consider shortening the rotation. Have you kind of thought about that more, and what do you think the rotation might look like versus you see what going for? Well, ultimately, my job is to win the game. It's, it's, it's to play the guys who are the most alert, the guys who are carrying out the game plan, and uh, at the highest level, because you want all guys on the floor, all five, understanding what we're doing, and you don't have to try to coach through every position or every every situation every single time down. So I think that having to do that in Tulane was something that didn't make me feel good because it took my attention really pretty much away from the game. And uh, I have to be locked in on the game and, and, and what we're trying to do. I asked Henry this, but from your event forth, what's the vibe been like this week? The vibe has actually been good. I can say good after taking a loss like that. You have to tip your hat to Tulane. Those guys came to play. And uh, for us, it was just a reality check to all these new guys who didn't know who Tulane was and didn't respect that they were going to come out and play hard because, you know, again, the University of Memphis can't afford to take any losses because we know we're going to drop hugely in, uh, in any ranking. So we have to just be more mindful of that. With the five days off, which is rare at this time of year, how did that allow you to get your guys more closer to being healthy than they closer to being healthy? Yeah, we um, we gave them a day off uh, after we got back from New Orleans, and then we got to work. You know, we implemented these stations that we have with defensive stations. We uh, we made them communicate more, made them really commit to winning the game over everything. And uh, those five days were definitely needed. Is the communication issue on defense uh, showing itself in the over helping part of it? It seems like you guys have kind of gotten into this, or not you the players have gotten. Into Yeah, and that's not the game plan. That's what I said. We had to refocus and get back to what we what we do. That's it's not Memphis basketball. We we don't want to give inappropriate help. We don't want to help appropriately. Like if, if someone's beaten, then we have to take that guy. Then we're not going to get get uh, get beaten. But when you're just helping just to help, and no one knows you're helping, and you leave your man for a layup, then that's not being smart. That's you making a decision to do something outside of what we've already. The game plan is already set. All you have to do is stick to the game plan. The lack of communication is guys just not want, willing to talk. You know, it's just guys are reacting and you're getting two guys on the ball, which is leaving someone open. And that's not what we want. And Kendrick said you put the onus on him and DeAndre to up their communication, like be the, be the guys to sort of correct that. Yeah, well, they're, they're our two best players, and it has to be on both ends of the floor. And DeAndre knows. And Kendrick knows from playing against us all those years how we play. And um, DeAndre and Alo both know how, how it's supposed to be done. So I did hold uh, Kendrick and DeAndre more accountable on those, in those areas. I think you said Monday, um, I forgot how you phrased it, but basically you were saying that you're trying to get Kendrick to play in a different style almost, maybe not go for 30 or whatever it may be and kind of spread the ball, spread the ball. What does that look like ideally for you? Uh, for us, I think that the throwing the ball ahead more to give our guys a chance to have fast breaks um, hitting one side and then him cutting through to the other side so we can move it from side to side because the defenses are just loading up. 
It gives other guys a chance to play more and have more freedom out there so that they can ultimately help the team and help him. And um, that's, that's just what I mean by that. Coach, as you prepare for East Carolina tomorrow, what has stood out to you about the program? About East Carolina? You know, with them having a new coaching staff and bringing in new players, they're playing extremely hard. It's like they're playing with a chip because, you know, when you look at the rankings, they're finished almost last every year. And uh, that's been kind of the, the deal on ECU. And they're trying to dispel that or take that away. And like, hey, we're here to stay. And they have a, they play hard. They play pretty well. They went on the road and won at Wichita. Uh, they just lost at home to uh, UCF. But they they play pretty hard. Third conference play. Obviously, South Florida, you guys win probably closer towards the end than many would have expected mm -hmm. and then lost to Lane. Is it concerning? Is it appropriate wake-up call? How do you classify it so far? It's a little bit of both to me. It was concerning and it's appropriate wake-up call because we haven't been doing that. It seemed like the more guys we've gotten back, the more – the more problems that we've had. So now I, it's up to me to just get back to what we used to do. We got to get it back to where we were because we were trending in the right direction. We were, we were rising and then all of a sudden, it's like now we're three and two in the last five games. That's, that's not good. Kendrick says you, got, you asked the guys to take things more personal on defense. What does that look like? Yeah, to me, it's just guarding your yard and don't give, we call it triggers. If you don't give up a trigger, then there's no way we have to help. And now all we can do is box out better, rebound better, and then get out on the fast break. So that's just a challenge to everyone to protect our paint, not let guys just drive around you. And if they do, then you got to come out of the game. Just how it is. It's going to be more accountability. Penny, before the season, I think you had said that with this defense, you saw Shades as one of your best defenses mm -hmm. since you've been here. Um, and obviously this entire program is built on elite defense. With what's going on with the team right now, is that like kind of an identity crisis or how would you characterize what y'all are dealing with? I would say identity crisis. I think some guys are just focused on shots and minutes and not actually defense, we're a defensive team first. And, um, you know, everybody has an opportunity to kind of make mistakes, but it has to be aggressive, aggressive mistakes, and it has to be trying to do the game plan. It can't be trying to do it on your own. So for us, it's, I think it's identity uh, crisis with guys is just thinking it's all about scoring. How do you kind of get back to where you want to be? We put the stations together this week where we had, one station was one-on-one, -on -one, another station was two-on-two. -two. Another station was wall up charges and uh, protect the paint. And uh, we just worked those stations all week just to let them know this is who we are. Is there a, uh, any part of correcting what's been happening uh, defensively? Is there any, you know, do you press less? Do you press more? Do you? Well, that's the biggest thing. The pressing is not hurting us. It's basically like half court guys that's just blowing around us. You know, because if the press was hurting us, I'm going to get out of it. I'm never going to stay in the press if it's hurting us. I think because we're a pressing team, actually, we've gotten the turnovers that we wanted in the press. That we, The times that we have, I think we're getting a turnover or steal 80% uh, of the time, which is a high clip. Think about that. We're not doing it as much anymore. So um, I think when we do it, we do it well. It's just in the half court, guys getting spread out too far, guys letting guys drive around them. And that's, that's been the biggest thing, our half court defense. Kendrick said you guys are watching. I wasn't. I mean, I, I watch all games, not only in our conference, but, you know, their culture is set. You don't get a chance to play on the floor unless you're playing hard. They don't coach effort, you know, and uh, that's the same way here. We're not going to we've, – we've tried to coach effort a little bit here. It, that's costed us, you know, to be where we are right now. Well, he said that it was a reminder of what it's going to take to get to the top of the conference to win the conference championship. Is that almost a – you maybe not encourage that, but are you cool with, like, you guys getting – it doesn't take for me to do that. We've already been down that road. You know, it's for the guys that haven't been here, you know, that, that look at it like, okay, we see how they play every single night. There isn't any change in who they are. They're going to go out and play physical. They're going to play hard. They're going to play tough. It's the same thing here. Do you see a need to change the starting lineup at all? Starting lineup, you need to see it. Do you see a need to change? Um, possibly. You know, I see where guys are, are not playing well. And uh, but it's a it's a product of how we advance the ball. It's a product of how we are not sharing the ball. I think the guys in the starting lineup could help more if they're allowed to help more. I mean, we just got to have more ball movement. But there is there is an opportunity to have some guys uh, change and, and be in the starting lineup. But they have to do what they have to do is where everybody's still going to have the same responsibilities. Penny, obviously, you and everybody else uh, spoke so highly of Demario Mario Franklin mm -hmm. in terms of being a scorer and being that third guy for you guys. Is there kind of a reason why his role might not be as large as some might have expected these past two games? Well, I mean, he's he's trying to fit in. He's been out for a while. We really we really needed him defensively more than anything to come in and be a stopper. And then he needs to be a guy that knocks down open shots. 
And again, that's what ball movement, that's what throwing the ball ahead, which will make it more effective. And it's got to be more from a defensive mindset. I think offense, you score, you score through stopping people and then getting out on a fast break. I don't think it has to be set plays for anybody outside of DeAndre and, uh, and Kendrick, and we just need to let the ball flow. Stop it. <laughs> Kappa Alpha Psi, man. I mean, it's about achievement. Honestly, it's, 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 it was our found, Founders Day, J5. And um, it's just about, you know, trying to, it's like we teach these young men about approving and, and then achieving. Don't, don't go there, Terry D. It's all about oh, KSI. <laughs> go ahead, put, put, put the button, put the dab in. <laughs> Gotta throw the yo. <laughs> 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 <laughs>